Hello, and welcome back to Jacksonville University and OSEARCH Virtual Marine Science Camp. Um, we hope that you were able to tune in with us yesterday or maybe this morning. Um, and we've got some great content for you now. Catherine Baumgartner from Ocean Family Games is gonna do a squid dissection with us. And she's also got a presentation. And we will um, be fielding your questions as always. And then this afternoon at 3 p.m., we have Keith Crawley from the Shark Museum, and he's going to talk about prehistoric sharks. So that should be great. I know you guys are eager to hear about sharks. So let me switch over for a moment. To Catherine. Let's see. I am not seeing Catherine on here quite yet, so hang tight. Hi there. Hi. So great to see you. Great to see you as well. Can you see me? Now I cannot. Now okay, I see me... black. See if I can figure that out. While you're figuring that out, I'm going to respond to a couple of these comments. So I see that okay. poor Diana has music at three, and she's a little bummed that she's going to miss her prehistoric talk on sharks. However, don't worry. This is being recorded, and you should be able to see it later. OK? So after music, you can uh, come back and, and learn about prehistoric sharks. What are you working on, Catherine? Your live camera for the dissection? Um, I am uh, attempting to share my video so you guys can see me, but um, it looks fine on my end, but it appears that you can't see me. Is that correct? No, we see a black screen. OK. So you clicked on uh, the arrows at the bottom right, and then you clicked on the icon that has the square with the arrow coming out of it? Give me just a second here. No problem. Got the square with the arrow coming out. And oh, maybe. Well, um, OK, I'm still going to talk to the comments while you're working on that. Yeah, yeah. Give me just a second. Let me get my tech guy. No problem. So Army Aviator, we are also very excited. And yes, Isabella Eager, we are going to be dissecting something. Um, Catherine Baumgartner is gonna dissect a squid. I know you guys are shark fans. A lot of sharks eat squid. So, So when I do this in my labs at JU, we have the students write their name using the squid ink, which is a lot of fun. And if they can, they draw a picture, usually of a squid, but not always. I don't know. Hi there. Can you guys see us now? We can see you. Hey. And a handsome Wonderful. man behind you. <laughs> uh oh, he's out again. <laughs> uh, wonderful. We're up and running. Fabulous. Um, I think so. So, um, are we, um, Dr. Simmons? Are yeah. we ready to rock and roll? Or we are ready to rock and roll. Whatever you. I don't know if you want to go okay. straight to dissections or sharing your screen. Yeah. Uh oh. It went black again. Yeah. Uh-oh. Are we here? Let's see. Catherine is sharing content. But I'm just seeing black. OK. You can't see my my video. My uh, You can't see me there? I well, see you. See. Hold on. OK, hold on just one second. Um, let me see if I can 
jump to my content and we'll see if we can jump start it here. Can you see the content on my screen? I see Catherine is sharing content, but I don't see the content. Okay. Apologize for the. No problem. I wow. think these guys are understanding that uh, we're marine scientists yeah. and not audiovisual <laughs> experts. So one of the most beautiful things that I have ever seen in person were two squid on a night snorkel communicating through bioluminescence. It was unreal. And I was only, let's see, I was in ninth grade when that happened. And I've seen a few things that were beautiful since then, but nothing quite like that. So I really like squid. Dr. Simmons, can you see my yes. squid anatomy presentation? Right now, now I can, yes. Hey, there That's we go. Perfect. Well, at least we got this going. That's great. Um, I'm ready. Yeah, are we, uh, should I keep going here? I apologize for the little technical difficulties. No problem. Yeah, go ahead. And if you don't mind, um, I'll field questions to you as they pop up. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I can't really see you guys on my end, just to let you know. So feel free to uh, answer questions as they come in. Uh, Dr. Simmons, I'd love some help with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad I could be here. I want to thank, uh, I want to thank you guys for the invite. I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, Real Dr. Simmons and Jacksonville University invited me to, to jump on board and help teach you guys a little bit more about marine science. The camp sounds like it's got an awesome uh, schedule for the week. So what a, what a great opportunity for you guys. Uh, my name, I'm not sure how much information you gave Dr. Simmons, but my name is Catherine Baumgartner. I'm the president of a company called Ocean Family Games. And I have been fortunate to partner with uh, OSEARCH. And we are in the process of creating uh, games and children's books for OSEARCH. And um, we're really excited about that. We, we're uh, able to utilize um, their open source data within our, within our games. And then also uh, through our sales, we're able to donate back to OSEARCH to help uh, with their mission of, of protecting the ocean. So uh, we're excited about that. Let's get into our squid anatomy. What you're gonna learn today is the following, why squid are important, how scientists classify living organisms, and internal and external anatomy of a squid. Now you might be asking yourself, uh, you guys, I've heard you, you've done quite a bit on, on sharks uh, the last, uh, well, yesterday and today, and then also uh, in the next couple days here at the Marine Science Camp. So you might be asking yourself, well, it's a little different than sharks, but believe it or not, squid are uh, an important part of the ocean. Um, there's a number of uh, different reasons why squid are in front. They do live in salt water and they're found all over the world. And a couple of cool facts, they can be found in, depending on the species, anywhere from one foot of water all the way down to 60 feet of water. And they do have a relatively short lifespan. They tend to live about 12 or 18 months. But they're important to the ecosystem because they are uh, an important part of the food chain. They have uh, prey that, uh, that feeds on them, such as sharks, sperm whales. Um, believe it or not, other squid eat them. That's a little uh, odd, but some animals do that. Um, seals, dolphins, there's some seabirds that feed on them. And of course, uh, humans feed on them as well. And as predators, they're an important uh, aspect as well. Now, their prey will depend on you know what region of the world they're found in, but uh, the majority of their diet is krill, uh, fish, crustaceans, which are um, like little little shrimp, which we'll learn a little bit more about in a minute, and then uh, of course other squid. I want to get into, uh, before we get into the dissection of the squid, I want to talk a little bit about how scientists name living organisms. And I don't know if this is kind of a, a open chat deal where the kids can type in their answer, but if anybody knows the answer to this question, how scientists name living organisms, you can uh, possibly type it in now. Um, and we will get into 
a little bit more about classification. Now, when I was growing up, which was way too long ago, um, I learned a saying, and that saying was King Philip came over from Germany singing. And the reason I learned the saying was so that I could remember the order or the level at which we classify organisms. And if you remember or have learned a similar saying, you might remember that the highest arc, higher, the, the highest level of hierarchy in classification, uh, which is seen at the top, there is kingdom. And of course it goes all the way down to very specific species. And when scientists classify uh, organisms, they do so based on their characteristics. And so, for example, uh, the kingdom Animalia has a very wide range of organisms that are found within that kingdom. And when you narrow it down all the way to the bottom of the species, you get down to a very specific organism where only that specific animal has um, that species name. And this is important so that scientists all over the world can communicate with each other and know uh, which species you're talking about. I've got a quick question. So that we've had yeah. some good questions. I'm just going to interrupt for questions that are relevant to what you're talking about at the moment. And if there's more general questions sure. that aren't related to your current topic, I'll wait till the end. But somebody said, what, I thought that scientists named organisms with Latin. With um, So yes, that brings up a really good point. And um, so a lot of the and, and you can maybe chime in on this as well, Dr. Simmons, if you have more to add, but from what I know, there's um, a, a lot of the words kind of root from um, from from Latin. So, um, and we'll kind of get into that in a minute when actually when we talk about the, uh, the phylum for the, or the, excuse me, the class for the squid. Um, Right. Uh, so, so, so yes. Yeah. I don't know if you want to add these, to that. Well, this division, this broke breaking down from kingdom phylum from more general to more specific is like taxonomy, and frequently, almost always, those taxonomic those names within each taxonomic category are from Latin. And so, yeah, particularly we we frequently know that genus and species names are written in italics, and they're Latin, right? So, good point, sure. person in comments. Sorry, I lost. Army aviator yeah. sent that. Okay. <laughs> uh, not a problem at all. Were there any other questions, or did you want me to keep going on the next slide? There are some other good questions, but there are more broad questions that haven't been touched on yet. So we'll save those for the end. You got it. Thank you. We'll go ahead and go on to the next slide. So what I'd like to do is just for a brief moment, um, I'd like to go ahead and um, I'd like to just go ahead and classify the squid that we're going to dissect just so we have a little bit of a better understanding about the animal um, from a scientific uh, and taxonomic point of view. So the squid is found in the kingdom Animalia and I've listed uh, a few characteristics of these animals. Um, so uh, so animal, uh, animals found in the kingdom Animalia tend to be multicellular, which means they are made up of more than one cell. They tend to be eukaryotic, which means they uh, have uh, within their cells, there is a nucleus and organelles. So they're a little bit more complex than, um, you know, let's say your uh, plant cell. They have no cell walls, which is one of the differences between an animal and a plant. And most of these animals are free moving. Now there's a few exceptions. Uh, sponges are, uh, you know, not, necessarily free moving. And then there's also uh, some other examples. Uh, one popping in my mind right now is an Idarian. Uh, you know, a coral reef doesn't necessarily get up and, and move around. So there are some exceptions within, within this category. Um, and then generally they consume food. So they need to um, eat it and they tend to have um, a system to process that opposed to uh, relying on uh, you know, for example, plants rely on sunlight for um, for their food. Moving on to the next level of uh, taxonomy, which is your phylum. And squid are found in the phylum Mollusca. Uh, these, again, these are kind of general um, characteristics. There are some exceptions. They tend to have bilateral symmetry, which I'll show you in some examples in a minute. Uh, they tend to have soft bodies in a mantle that secretes a shell. Now, 
I want you to kind of remember that because as we get, as we dissect the squid in a minute, but not yet, um, you know, you might say to yourself, well, they don't have a shell that's kind of odd. But um, when we get inside the squid, they actually do have a modified uh, shell that's inside their body. And then moving on to the class, I'm just gonna break it down to the class. I'm not gonna, oh, excuse me, I forgot about this one. So here are a few examples of mollusks. There are, of course, snails, um, octopus. This is a picture of the blue, uh, blue ringed octopus, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and from what I hear, not that safe to be around. Uh, <laughs> squid, um, octopus, clams, and a sea hare. I was actually in the Florida Keys uh, a couple of weeks ago helping out at a marine science camp down there and um, found this, I was snorkeling along just real near the shore and found this absolutely ginormous sea hare. That's actually a picture of my hand holding it right there. You can see how big it is. And these uh, sea hares, they secrete this, um, this ink similar to squid and, and, um, and it's, it's absolutely gorgeous, like a magenta, real bright. You can barely see it in the picture. I should have maybe added another picture in there, but uh, anyway, if you ever see a spotted sea hare and it happens to ink, should it, um, but the ink itself smells like roses, if you can believe it or not. Um, there's not many things I would invite you to smell if you ever got an, an opportunity as far as uh, uh, ink goes, but that's definitely one of them. Were you so stained afterwards? Pardon me? Were, were you stained at all? I had a student who decided to put the sea hair in her hair and then her forehead was stained purple for three days. That's a shout out to you, Ashlyn. Oh, wow. That is incredible. Um, no, I don't, I don't recall there being any staining, um, but I'll have, to, I'll have to play around with that next time, <laughs> next time I see one. That's funny. Um, and then, uh, like I said, we're just going to break it down to the class. Uh, I don't want to take it any, any farther than that right now, but uh, they're found in a class called Cephalopoda. And this kind of goes back to that Latin um, background where you know we don't we don't necessarily call it a head foot but when you when you look up that word cephalo means head and poda means foot so um, that's kind of where they they got the name for that uh, they are cephalopods are the most complex they have the, the most complex brain of any invertebrate there are some pretty neat stories that I've heard out there about um, uh, studies that have been done where you know, a scientist will put an octopus in a jar and then they'll have a tank with a crab next to it. And um, I don't know if, uh, if, you can, if you can Google, I don't know if that's up there in the World Wide Web, but there's some pretty neat experiments you can look up that they've done to kind of uh, explain the uh, complexity of their brain. And of course, another characteristic is the ring of arms or tentacles that surround its head. We'll, we'll uh, take a peek at of that um, in just a minute. Now, I have uh, a few examples of cephalopods. There's octopus, squid, a nautilus, and of course the cuttlefish. And um, what I'd like to do, if I can take just a minute um, to attempt to see if I can get my screen to share a little bit differently. Give me just a moment. No worries. See if I can get this up. I'll see if I can answer some of these questions. So we got one that said, do squids have to move to breathe? That is, I have never heard that. They're not like sharks. In fact, I think that they can have some gas exchange to their skin, but I am not a squid expert. Catherine, do you know? Right, I, I don't think that they do um, need to be moving in order to, to breathe just because the way, and, and we'll actually look at this hopefully in a minute, um, when when their gills are in the water, they they are really expanded nicely. Um, I've actually seen squid kind of resting, not not necessarily resting, but not moving in the water column. Um, now they do have a really neat way that they do move through jet propulsion, which we'll talk right. a little bit more about once we once we get into the dissection here. Can you um, can you guys see my screen now by chance? We see you. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, is now, did you have another question or? No, um, I was just answering questions while you were working yeah, on that. Perfect, wonderful. Well, I've got a game that I'd love to play with everybody if you can still see my, my screen. We can. Um, yeah, so this is called mollusk, not a mollusk. So I just went over a few different characteristics of okay. mollusks. And 
I'm going to simply show you an animal. And I don't know um, if you guys can see each other or if there's a thumbs up button or a thumbs down that you can share. They can, I'm not really they sure can vote in the comments. Saying. Yeah, they can say okay. yes yeah, or no comments, or up or down. Comments, you can just say, so the question is, is it a mollusk or is it not a mollusk? So you can either say yes or no. And so I will go ahead and show you my first question. Which is this, and I'll try and rotate it a little bit. Hopefully everybody can get a good, whoop, a good shot of that. So the question is, is this a mollusk or is this not a mollusk? And you're, you might be seeing some answers pop in there. I'm not seeing much on my end, but I will go ahead and reveal the answer if you think it's a good time. I think the comments are a little okay. delayed, but you can go ahead. I'm sure okay. they've already formed their guests. Oh, we got not a thumbs a up from Shelly. Shelly thinks it's a mollusk. Okay. Okay, Shelly is correct. Good job, Shelly. Um, so as we talked about earlier, they tend to have bilateral symmetry, and I don't want to actually, um, I don't want to actually, you know. Yeah, don't ruin your pin shell. Yeah, I'll show you this one. This one's a little bit better with the bilateral symmetry. So this has two halves. Um, when it was alive, there was a soft body inside of there. And of course, you can see that these are both uh, clearly shells. And these are made out of um, calcium carbonate that's excreted by the mantle of the animal. So good job, Shelly, and the rest of you guys. This is a mollusk. All right, next specimen coming right Now this is a little tricky, so bear with me. Can you guys see that? All right, so mollusk, not a mollusk. What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal. Some okay. people think this might be a mollusk because of the external skeleton, but this is actually what we call an arthropod. So uh, this is found in a different phylum and arthropods tend to have uh, jointed legs. And uh, these guys have segmented bodies. There's generally an abdomen, a thorax. This is a Florida spiny lobster. A little bit different from your main lobster. I'm not sure where everybody's from who's all online over. Today, but all over. Wonderful. That's exciting. Um, so you can tell it's a Florida spiny lobster because of these two rostral horns. Um, hopefully you can get a good shot of those. Mm -hmm. um, they lack the big claws that the main lobster have. Um, but this is uh, an arthropod. So good job for those of you who guessed that. And we learned something new every day for those of you who didn't. Here we go. We got a couple of specimens. Uh, mollusk, not a mollusk. I don't know if I can. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got to practice a little bit more on that. I don't know. My dad's a trombone player, so I got to work on that a little bit. Uh, this is, in fact, a mollusk. This is what they call a gastropod. And uh, gastropod, if you break down that, word is referring to its stomach and emerged with its foot. So these, uh, when, again, when it's alive, it has a mantle that excreted this beautiful shell. And this is a conch found in the Keys and Bahamas. All right. And we'll do one more here. I don't know if we can see this one. Mollusk, not a mollusk. Any ideas? They <laughs> are playing along and they're participating and most people are getting the okay. answers right. They're just a little delayed. Love it, that's all right. We're, we can work with delay. You guys have certainly worked with mine today. Uh, this is not a mollusk. This is found in the phylum Echinodermata, which when you break that uh, word down means spiny skin. And uh, this is a sea star. They tend to have pentaradial symmetry, which means body parts of five and of course spiny skin and uh there we go very good wonderful well what i'd like to do next if you guys are ready for it is uh go ahead and get into the squid dive section yeah can i ask um, you a few yeah. quick questions yeah absolutely let's go for so it. some of these you may touch on in your dissection but i know that when i dissect squid sometimes the gonads are real obvious and sometimes they aren't so someone asked if all mollusks are multi-gender 
if all mollusks are multi-gender? Okay, so that's a fantastic question. You guys have, um, you guys are really on your marine science. So to the best of my knowledge, uh, squid are either male or female. And uh, when we cut into the squid, we can reveal, and maybe you guys can uh, keep this in mind as we cut in, it's usually pretty obvious if there is a white um, kind of mass towards the top of the squid, it tends to be a male. And if it's more of a clear or a yellowish mass, then it's a female. And so uh, we'll check that out in just a second, but fantastic question. Awesome. Oh, are we ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. To, well, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, let me let me just go ahead, go ahead and switch over to my camera. Um, Dr. Simmons, if you have one other question you want to try and answer while I'm getting this connected. Sure. So there was a someone asked, do y'all research the squid, the skin of squid? And I don't think that Catherine or I <laughs> researched the skin of squid, but there certainly are people who research the skin of squid. And there's some really neat videos online of people um, making the chromatophores um, expand and contract by hooking them up. This is to a skin that is not on a live squid um, by running electricity through it. Some people have even set it to music. It's quite fun. Um, but yeah, there's a fair amount of research um, into uh, the squid of um, of squids, skin of squids. Say that three times fast um, <laughs> because of their chromatophores and ability to change texture and color. Um, and then we had one that said, if squid go extinct, would it affect the whole ocean or only certain parts? Um, squid are really important. Sometimes actually their populations can take off and decimate a food supply. Um, and sometimes they're a really key food source. So if they went extinct in a specific area, it could be very detrimental. Um, however, if all squid went extinct, I don't think it would have a huge impact at the poles. Um, so, you know, again, I think it would heavily impact certain parts of the ocean and that can have a cascading effect but there are parts of this the ocean that i think would not be affected if squid went extinct but that's not something i don't think that's a, a world we want to live in wow what a nice squid you have there what kind of squid is hey, that i'm so, so glad you can see it um this is you know, to be completely honest i'm not 100 percent sure of the exact species no worries um i was uh, i was able to pick it up at my local uh bait shop and what's great about uh marine science and conservation is that you know, we're big into uh, catch and release down here. We do a lot of fishing as a family. So the plan is to do this as a uh, dissection today. We'll toss it in the freezer and the next time we go out fishing, we'll reuse it for um, for bait. So we're not, uh, you know, it's not going to be thrown away. Uh, it'll be multi-purposed. Our favorite um, squid to dissect are from the bait shop too. And then we feed them to the yeah. aquarium animals here at JU. But uh, I oh, like them because they're not cool. covered in preservative. They're nicer to work absolutely. with, I think. Right, absolutely. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get my safety goggles on and uh, my gloves and all that fun stuff, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. If you guys can see my squid and we're good to go. We are good. Um, wonderful. So I wanted to uh, start out and let me know if you guys can, if you are ever in a trouble hearing me. I'm gonna be kind of facing the squid now close to my microphone. So just let me know if you need me to redirect that. Okay. Um, so the side here that I have this put on, this is the, uh, the top side or the dorsal side. Um, and we'll flip it over to the ventral side in just a moment. But uh, what's interesting about here, I just wanted to mention there are, you'll notice that this side is really, really dark in comparison to this side, which is really, really light. And this is a pretty common. Uh, characteristic that's found in animals, not only in the ocean, but uh, on land as well. Um, and the uh, this is called uh, counter shading, where animals are found uh, they dark on one side and, and light underneath. And the idea behind that is to help uh, to help them camouflage so that so that predators and, and prey uh, can't see them or um, they can sneak up on on their prey. So. Um, on the dark side here, you'll notice 
um, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but if you were to get a bait squid up yourself and have your safety gear to do your own dissection, you can rub the mantle and you may actually notice it darkening. And these squid have uh, little cells on their body that are called chromatophores. And these chromatophores um, are really, really cool. It lets them change from uh, dark to light and um, black and red and brown and all different colors, again, to help uh, to help protect them in the, in the ocean. You'll we'll see up here, uh, these are the fins up top here. These help the, the squid swim. Um, and the other thing I want to mention before I get too far into the dissection itself is this piece right here um, is all part of its siphon. And what these squid do is they suck water. Oh, this one's a little slimy. Extra juicy today. Mm. Yeah. I am definitely going to some calamari tonight. Okay. So right here is the siphon. So what they do is they suck in water through their mantle and they push it out through the siphon. And that allows them to have uh, what we call jet propulsion. And they can move up to speeds. Oh, I probably should have looked it up before I did this, but I want to say, I, I don't know. Do you know how fast a squid goes? Well, I mean, of course they can vary, right? Depending on the species. Sure. So sure. that's our excuse for not knowing the exact speeds. Okay, but. yeah. I, I was wanting to say 40, but I, for some reason 26 is like, I don't know. Maybe you guys can Google it while I'm talking here. Um, but the other thing that we have are a couple of different features. These are two extraordinarily oh they got a little mixed up here these are two long tentacles and the squid use these long tentacles to uh they use them for in reproduction but they also use them to kind of reach out and bring their prey closer to their mouth and you'll notice i don't know how well you can see but these are absolutely beautiful suction cups right going all up and down these arms so there's two tentacles and there's generally eight arms one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in the center of this magnificent ring of arm and tentacle is something called a buccal bulb. And the buccal bulb holds a beak. And in a minute, but not yet, we will go ahead and pull that beak out. It actually looks just like a bird beak, which is kind of cool. Um, I think that's all I wanted to do on the external part. Uh, Dr. Simmons, did you have anything you wanted to add before I add into this lovely squid? No, except that I looked up the speed of squid, and so this is not all squid, but for the Pacific flying squid, they can reach up to 11.2 meters per second, which is faster than Bolt ran uh, in the uh, London Olympics. He was only 2.31 meters oh. per second, so. Um, oh, wow. I can only imagine what Archytuthis gigantis or one of the giant squids can do. Right, exactly, right. Very cool. Thanks for looking that up. No problem. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I place the squid on its ventral side, and I'm just going to kind of pinch the mantle here. And I'm going to start at the base and cut it all the way up. Did you say this is being recorded? Yes. Um, Dr. Simmons? Yes, yes, it'll cool. be available so if, later. Yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to go, I don't know how parents, if, if parents are into this, but you could go and grab a squid, as long as you have your safety gear, um, you know, a spade squid, and you're welcome to follow back along with the video um, and, and pick it out for yourself. That, and, uh, that's a great idea. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, so we cut into the squid, and if anybody remembers, uh, We've got a white mass up top. I don't know if you want to plug in your answers of whether you think that's a male or female. I'll give it a minute. You guys can plug in your answers there. Um, this is a healthy looking squid. We're going to separate a few pieces here and then we will get right into it. So uh, those of you who guessed that this is a male, you are correct. The white here is a male. And like I said, if it's clear or a yellowish kind of mass, that indicates a female. Now these pieces right here, you'll see there's two of them on either side. And I don't know uh, if you guys have any thoughts about what that 
Mm -hmm. But I will, oh, let me just reach that one a little bit. Um, I will tell you that this is, or these are the uh, gills. So I'm going to just rip. Oh, wow. I really, this is extra juicy today. That is fantastic. <laughs> this is great science fun. So I'm going to grab that gill and try not to get squid juice all over the place. I'm going to squirt a little bit of water in there. It's you know, a little bit difficult to see, but I'll do our best. We're making do with the situation here. I'm flexible. So take my forceps and just kind of swish it around. You can see the gills, once they get into the water, they really open up. And it gives for a lot of uh, surface area, and allows these squid to breathe when they're in the water. So again, take it out, it kind of turns into a blobby mesh of goo, put it back in, stands out nicely, and there you go. So we'll put the gill aside for a moment, and we'll take a close look. You guys, I don't know if you can see that, I think you can. This huge kind of metallic looking uh, organ. Does anybody have any guesses? what might be ridiculously large and kind of metallic looking. I'll, I'll spill the beans. I'll give you another five seconds if you want to take some guesses. Um, but think buoyancy in the water, things like that, similar um, to some other animals that use their large liver, is what it is, as, uh, as buoyancy within the water. So um, some marine animals will have a little bit of extra, uh, a, a larger oil, um, oily liver, excuse me. And uh, these guys use that to be able to stay buoyant within the water column. Now, right on top of the liver, we're going to just peel it right at the base, going all the way up. I've never done this on a Zoom before. This is really fun. I hope you guys are having a you're getting a lot uh, of praise in the comments. I'm getting a lot of what? Praise. People are saying this is great. And then in between, the, oh. this is great. They're, they're guessing bodily oh, organs. Yeah. So it makes for interesting reading. Totally love it. Love it. Um, I'm going to so just peel the ink stash off of the squid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal a little bit of this water. I'm going to kind of, I don't know, I'm going to cut it up a little bit, trying to get some ink out of this thing. So, so when he's squid, um, when they move on, when they pass, some of them have more ink than others, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. So we're going to see if we can really get this ink on here. Chappity, chappity, chap. All right, so I'm going to poke at it a little bit, a little bit here. I don't know. This one doesn't have a lot of ink today. Ah. Might have to dissect another one. No, just that joking. happens sometimes. <laughs> so, all right. Well, sometimes you can get a lot of ink. We're going to leave the ink set aside for me. Um, I want to get into the beak. And Dr. Simmons, don't let me forget to get into the eyeball before I'm done. Because I will not. And, and we but specifically I, got some questions on how do squid eat and digest. So I was waiting on that oh, one until you got to this part. Yeah. Yeah, well, let me get back in here. So, um, so hopefully you guys have a good shot here. This again is the buccal ball, the area of running it. There's a little black hard piece that is sticking out right here. And I, oh, yeah, that just popped out. There we go. Uh, I'm trying to multitask. It. I hopefully you guys can see that. That is, uh, did I get the whole beak in there? What? I don't even know. Oh, that's half the beak. I got to get back in. Give me just a second. All right. So has to be oh yeah there's definitely more where that came from okay oh oh that was, <laughs> that, was that was a little juicier than i was expecting okay so now <laughs> ah, this is so much fun i would not be i would not want to be anywhere else right now okay so we got this beak and I'm um, really trying to get it together, kind of like the bird beak here, folks. So this, when you, I'm, I'm all over the place, aren't I? I'm just gonna no, you're doing great. Your enthusiasm is wonderful. Okay. <laughs> um, 
So this beak is, again, from inside that, that beautiful bulb. And believe it or not, I actually had a roommate. I used to work at a place in the Florida Keys, the Newfound Harbor Marine Institute at Sea Camp. And I had a roommate who actually got bit by a squid. Ouch. So this can actually be like a little vicious. I would not want this beak crunching on my finger. Um, so we're going to put the beak aside. And then what's really cool, I hope you guys are staying tuned because I'm going to really try hard. This takes a little bit of skill um, to do. I'm going to cut outside the buccal ball. And what I'm going to attempt to do is show you where the stomach is. Let's we'll see that. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. I'm gonna get this beautiful bulb out of the area a little bit. We're gonna have to cut away. Thanks for the indication with me. So the ultimate goal here is to show you that the beautiful bulb is gonna be attached to a esophagus. As long as I don't break the esophagus from the beautiful bulb, we should be able to see the stomach move from up top. So let me just really use my dissecting skills here. Give me just, oh yeah, this is gonna happen. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this a, a little bit harder. And if you can see, can you guys see that? Hold on, let me, can you guys see that organ moving up top? Yes. So up here in this area is where the stomach is. And what I'm simply doing is pulling this buccal bulb where the squid eats. It's attached right here uh -huh. to the esophagus that goes all the way through the length of the squid's body, all the way up to its stomach. So that is kind of a fun thing to do. Now, if you're doing this at home by yourself um, later on, you just have to be careful when you pull that buccal bulb because it's really easy to separate the esophagus. It's a little bit fragile. You can see how and small it is. Um, so two more things that I want to get into. I think now would be an appropriate time to go back to the eye. Um, and I actually forgot to mention this when we were doing the extra anatomy, but you guys are so flexible that we will get into it now. So this, um, this eye, I don't know if you guys can tell the size of the eye in comparison to the size of the squid's head. Let me just take the eyeball out and show you, okay? Now, this is part, this is a part that can really get, like, extra juicy and quite intense. And also, there, for some reason, the eyeballs can have a lot of pressure in them. So if you cut into the eyeball, um, you might want to make sure that your mouth is closed. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. Oh, they can squirt um, quite a bit. So we're going to get in there. And... All right. Uh, oh no, I lost my lens. Hold on, we gotta take two. We only have two eyes. Um, let me attempt this one. Oh wow, I think the, the lens might have disintegrated. These guys. Oh, this is a pretty fresh squid. Let me just get in here. Just a second. Bear with me. Yep, there's the eye. Definitely lost the one. Well, anyway, they have a, um, oh, wait a second. What's that? <laughs> it was hiding. Wait for it. Wait. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, false alarm. Okay, yeah, I'm really getting in there brains and everything. Okay, can't find it. Anyway, uh, sometimes the squid have, um, well, when they're alive, they have uh, a lens, a clear, uh, real kind of round um, object up top in the eye. So if you guys, I don't know if you guys have your own squid, definitely take a look for that. Make sure, again, when you're cut into the eyeball, just uh, be aware of a little extra squirting. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the mantle, I'm going to hold down the mantle now, and I'm going to simply peel the entire body off of, oh, yeah, okay. 
um, off of the mantle. All right. And left behind, we mentioned earlier that uh, mollusks tend to have a shell. Well, these ones have a modified shell. And hopefully you can see that. That is what we call a pen. And they, it's very, very flexible and very thin. There's not really much to this pen. But uh, they use this for a little bit of stability. And uh, this is their modified shell. So you can always remember that these guys are related to snails and clams and other, and other mollusks. Now, back in the day, pirates used to take the, the pens from a squid and they take the ink from the ink sack and they uh, give themselves little tattoos, things like that. You can try that on your own. Um, but that concludes the uh, squid dissection. I'm going to de glove for a minute. And um, uh, Dr. Simmons, if you want to answer a quick question, I'm just going to kind of uh, pop back my, my other screen here if we have a second. Sounds great. Um, for those of you at home, we do not recommend giving yourself a tattoo. Um, <laughs> I do recommend taking the pen and trying to write your name or draw a picture with the pen and the ink sack. Um, some, Perfect. some other fun things you can do or that we do in our labs are um, if you have a ruler, you can measure the size of the eye and compare it to the size of the body and see what, what that ratio is compared to the size of your eye to your body. Squid tend to have much larger eyes relative to their body than we do to capture more light. Um, another fun one if you're into gruesome things is to take the ratio of the size of your thumb compared to the length of your body and then compare it to the size of beak that would be necessary to remove your thumb and the length of the squid body. So um, you can do some biometrics and see what size squid you need to worry about for thumb removal. And we can see your squid again. I mean, we can see your screen again. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Good. I just um, I just wanted to uh, kind of wrap up. I'll come back on in just a second. Um, but I did just wanna just wanted to wrap it up. Uh, and thank you guys, those of you who are there. I can't really see how many wonderful people are out there, but um, hopefully you guys learned something more about about squid. And um, you guys should check us out online. We're uh, at OceanFamilyGames.com. There's a lot of, um, if, you, if you go to our Educators Corner, there's some free um, activities and some games that we have up there. There's some like shark anatomy and shark tooth identification games. Um, and then of course, we've got a few products on our website as well that we've, uh, that we've done with OSearch. Um, but I just wanted to thank you guys again um, I'm going to go ahead and, and take my, my screen share feature off and get my camera back going. And uh, I don't know, uh, Dr. Simmons, if we wanted to uh, open it up for uh, questions or how I you want to wrap it up. I think that most people have been asking questions right along, but I'll give them a couple more minutes and just say, um, thank you so much. I was I just learned about your organization this week, and I was really impressed with your shark game. It's fabulous. And I wrote oh, down on my piece of paper to check out the educator's corner because I'm always looking for new entertainment, whether it be for my college students or my, my daughter or myself. Um, sure. And I have done squid dissections a bunch of times, and by watching you, I just learned some new methods. So I'm going to try. So that's a new way to get the pen out that I have never seen before. So I have learned something new in this process, and I love that. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad to know that you're. Yeah. I'm not the only one who sometimes has a small ink sack or that sort of thing. So. Um, right. Yeah. It was abs absolutely an honor. I, I couldn't be more pleased. And um, and even ap after we hang up, if there are follow up questions that people want to. Um, email me. I'm happy to provide my email if you'd like, Dr. Simmons, or okay. um, I don't know if you want them to go through you, um, whichever route works best. Um, feel free to state your email and I'll see if I can get your um, website up on our list with our recorded content so they can find that after the fact. Um, do you want to yeah. just say your email or do you want to no, send it to me? Not at all. You can, you can email me directly at info at Ocean Family Games with an s.com so info at oceanfamilygames.com and i'd be happy to answer any follow-up questions to the squid dissection or any other question you might have um i think most of the questions you had addressed at one point but i know people 
tune in and out. So you got that squid sure. at a bait shop, so it wasn't killed for this purpose, and you are going to go use it for bait, right? And when we dissect squid, because it wasn't preserved. So if you use preserved squid like that you order from a company, do not feed that to anything or use it as bait. But I know at JU, when we use um, frozen squid, we feed them to our tank critters downstairs. So we make sure that the squid is completely recycled and put to good use in addition to education, which is a very good use. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. Not a problem at all. Thank you so much for having me. Really, really had a good time this afternoon. Me too. Have a great day. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.